which is creed by Hashem, that Moshe Rabbeinu will not take Klausel into Eretz Yisrael because what he was told to speak to the rock, to extract water from the rock, rather than speaking to the rock, he struck the rock. Therefore, Hashem says, you had the opportunity, Lagdisheni, you could have sanctified me before the eyes of Klal Yisrael, and you did not. And therefore, you will not go in. And this is why Aaron passed away, and this is why Moshe passed away. He was lacking in clarity. And it says the reason why he struck, struck the rock was because he became upset. He became angered with them. He said, Shimu no Hamorim, listen, you rebellious people. That's why he made the mistake. It's interesting. Chazal tell us that the reason why we merited the water in the Midbar, in the desert, because Avram Avinu, he had offered the water to the angels who came in human form. And Chazal tell us, the Gemara tells us, the Medjish tells us, that anything that Avram had done himself came about by itself, came directly from Hashem. Anything that came through an intermediary had to come about through an intermediary. So that that he had said to the Malochim, to the angels, Hishanu Tachas Eitz, so the Ani Akovet came by themselves. That that he says, Echo Pas Lechem, he offered the bread himself, the bread came directly from Hashem. The month fell daily, on a daily basis. But the water, which he had delegated the water, he did not give the water himself. The water had to come through an intermediary. So anything which Avram did himself came directly from Hashem. Anything that was offered through an intermediary came through an intermediary. Therefore, initially, the water, the rock had to be struck when they, after they left Mitzrayim, and they were thirsting for water, Hashem says, strike the rock. So, if Avram Avinu would have offered the water himself, this whole situation with the Meim Riva would have never come about. That's firstly. So you'd say, well, Hashem would have brought about some other reason. Why Moshe Rabbeinu would have been tested, and he would have failed, and not to go into Eretz Israel. Would have been some other reason. But why did Hashem not want Moshe Rabbeinu to go into Eretz Israel? For what reason? He could have given the level of clarity. I mean, as much as Yeshua was qualified to be Moshe's success, but he was not Moshe. Yeshua was only, as the Gemara tells us, was only Kibnei Levana. He was the equivalent of the moon reflecting the light of the sun. But Pnei Moshe is Pnei Chama. He was the equivalent of the sun itself. So if you could have a level of leadership to be the equivalent of Moshe, why would we settle? Why would Hashem want us to be led by somebody of lesser statures? Stature. No, nobody's compared to Moshe Rabbeinu. So it's interesting. We find, Chazal tell us, that we find the Torah tells us specifically, very clearly, that where was Moshe Rabbeinu buried? He was buried Mubal Balpor, opposite Balpor. So Chazal cited a Medjush that once a year, the Balpor, we lost 24,000 Jews in the plague. And there's a question, according to other commentaries, even more than that. Those were the only the ones who actually were involved with the Bnos Moab, but other Jews also died at the time. Now, Pinchos's act of zealotry quelled the Midas Adin, but factually, this tremendous, very intense, continuously, this Kitruk, this prosecution on Klal Yisrael, Every year, once a year, when the Balpur is, or took place, it rises, it comes out of the ground, and when it comes out of the ground, it brings about the most intense level of prosecution. And the only one who could counter that prosecution is Moshe's burial location, which is opposite Balpur. And when it comes out and it sees Moshe's burial location, it sinks right back into the ground and it's silenced. So the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu had to strike the rock or whatever mistake he had to make, not to have the merit to go into Eretz Yisrael for the sake of Klal Yisrael. Had not, it was unrelated to himself. As we read, as Chazal tell us, Loma Nisro, Misit Tzadikim, to, let's say, to Yom Kippur, or Misis Miriam to Paraduma, there are many juxtapositions to tell us that Misit Tzadikim Mechaperis, 
that when a tzaddik passes away, it atones for the generation. So why does the tzaddik live? The tzaddik doesn't live for himself. Sometimes Hashem has to take the tzaddik to bring about atonement for the generation. Because if he doesn't, the generation will have to actually pay the price. Because that, So the only thing that could quell and silence the prosecution is only the death of the tzaddik. Identically, Moshe Rabbeinu for himself, he was worthy to go in. But for the sake of Klal Yisro, because Klal Yisro had failed multiple times, and they needed something to counter the prosecution, therefore Hashem withdrew the clarity from Moshe, and as a result of that, he forfeited his right to go into Eretz Yisroel.